All right, what's up, guys? So, Hot T, she has uploaded a video titled Gabby Hanna is so manipulative, and even to her own fans and family, like, I'm literally in disbelief. It really don't surprise me. Um, I've dealt with, uh, like, you know, content creators. I've been on YouTube for, like, 11 years, so I've dealt with content creators where they manipulate their fans. Um, it just probably a bunch of people around them. I think it was like one of the one things I do remember when I, I remember when I started taking YouTube serious back in 2015 and there was like, there was this one guy that was like really on my case over the fact that I didn't react to a video he wanted me to react to. I was like, video is stupid. No, I, there's just, I thought the video was dumb and I'm like, I'm not going to upload a video and it's like. I just started off and I'm like, I'm trying to like grow my channel. I ain't trying to have people sit down and just watch me not be interested into a reaction video. But yeah, I remember he got mad over it. And then there was like, he was making all these different videos on me. And I guess it was some kids that went to his school. It's just like, oh yeah, dude's just crazy and stuff. So yeah, um, it happens. You know, I've, I've seen, I've seen a lot of different people on YouTube and YouTubers that be manipulate, um, manipulating their fans their family, I'm like, that's some Dr. Phil type stuff. So I'm like, dang, that's crazy. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into this video. Guys, if you haven't, make sure you go subscribe to Hot Tea. Go show her love, support, do the same for her second channel, Ray Rahimi, and her business channel, Build Your Pocket. But in that being said, let's get into this video. On to full screens and stuff. There we go. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about Gabby Hanna once again. Hopefully you aren't sick of hearing about her just yet, but what can I say? More and more stuff. It's like, this is my go-to T-Channel. Like, I remember I I remember when T-Channels, they because what, T-Channels, they started like blowing up maybe a couple years ago, a few years ago. And I, yeah, it was like, it was up until I had came across um, Ray and that's when I was like, yeah, that, Ray, just let you know. You're the only you're the only T channel I watch. Even though the like the other big ones, I think it's like T it's like T Sesh or T Spill, some stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'm like I I watch you. It's like this this is the hot T. This is the T that I'll be looking for and stuff. So, but anyways her every single day but before we dive in make sure you guys are subscribed to this channel turn on your post notifications and comment something down below all right let's get into the tea so what's new with gabby hannah well a few days ago deaf noodles posted a few videos of gabby where she admitted to almost doxing an underage fan because she thought that they were suspicious in the twitter thread what? there were also like, what, screenshots of messages of one of gabby's former fans who also came forward explaining in DMs how Gabby allegedly used Patreon to coordinate harassment campaigns against people critical of her. And Gabby wow. discusses with her fans on a video chat several accounts that they should keep an eye on. There is also a TikTok that shows Gabby's fans flagging content that exposes her. It's just mm. a big mess. Let's get into it. Dang. Firstly, in those leaked video chats with Gabby, she talks about her breaking point and being afraid of a user that was suspicious. She mentioned that this user reminded her- It's funny, it's like, I remember I was like, I was always like critical about like the Gabby Hanna haters and stuff. Cause I had been following Gabby ever since the Vine days. And so I was like, I, I was honestly a fan of Gabby. But it just seems like now, like she she's kind of just going through like a Kanye West phase. And so I'm like, hey, you know, like, I don't know what she's overall dealing with. It has to be something, like, mentally, of course. But I just hope that she does seek out help. And, you know, like, everything's just cool with her eventually one day. But it's like, this this is something where it's, like, down the road, you are going to have to talk on this and let people know, like, hey, like, what was going on back then? Because you, you was on some weird stuff, posting weird dancing videos and joining discords and telling people it's like arguing with people it's, yeah it, it's just a lot but anyways her of somebody else girl we're patrolling these accounts we got you i love that thank you um my breaking point which there was this kid i don't know if you guys saw um sweet little boy named and I was so, so, so convinced it was somebody else because of something they had said. She was convinced it was an adult who interacts with young children inappropriately. Apparently, it was a young boy. Gabby made him message her on Instagram and then click on a link to check his IP address. Um, wow. And I had them, like, follow me on, or I had them message me on, ins like, Instagram to see the account and then had them click a link so that I could see their IP address and have them send me a video. But 
then once I got the video, I was like, oh my god, this video. Yeah, it's like, what? Yeah, I'm like, post a video or have them send you a video. I'm like, I. that's one thing for sure. I never click random links that I find online. Even if it's coming from the biggest, if it's coming from like Gabby Hanna or whoever, I'm like, oh, their stuff got hacked. So I'm like, yeah, if you messaging me, because I, look, I've been on the internet um, a lot longer than I've been on YouTube. So I know of, like, links and scams and all that stuff. Like, I remember back in the day when I would be getting cheat codes for video games and stuff. They giving them out to kids that I went to school with. Like, I was honestly a cheat code dealer when I was a kid. But anyways, um, back in my cheat code dealing days. No, I remember that when I go on the websites, they'd be like, you just won $10,000. I'm like... How many people are going on this website? I'm thinking this as a kid. I'm like, how many people are going on this website and seeing the same message? So I'm like, is there like, because I'm thinking this like, okay, there's probably millions of people probably getting Grant that follow San Andrea cheat codes. So like, how am I like, the? am, am I the only one seeing this or are there other, I have to, I, I know that there's other people seeing this. And then, yeah, then it's like when you get multiple computers or you just view that same website multiple, then it's like, oh, well, yeah, this stuff is fake. It's a scam. I was like... You don't even know who I am to give me ten thousand dollars. So, yeah, but um, it you know this just that's that's that scamming stuff. I'm like I wouldn't have trusted that. I've been like, hey yo, is there another way I can verify? Because I'm like I'm not clicking no link. Do you get my personal information? I know you, Gabby Hanna, and it's like yeah, definitely she's making more money than me. But still, I'm like I I don't uh, I don't trust that. So this person has sent me videos from somebody else before, so I know this person is capable of having somebody else send a video because they're mm. a grown adult who interacts so with why won't children you just in a way block that's appropriate and or report the account. Um, gets like. And she's gets taking the law into her own her. hands. It's like, like send a video, being like, "Hey, I'm this person." Like. So the video, I was like, oh, okay, but I still can't be sure if it's actually this person. That's what you, you got to think a little bit more on something like that. It's like, hey, send the video with today's date, you know, letting me know, like, hey, today's date, you know, this is the current day and all that stuff. Like, you know, or have them, like, like say supercalifragilisticexpialidocious or some stuff like that. Say that, and then today's date, which is um, uh, May uh, 22nd, to, um, 2021, they say that, then it's legit. But if they are like, "Hi, it's it's August um eighteenth, it's nineteen eighty four, yeah," then it's like then it's fake. But and then I ask them to uh, click something so I can see their IP address and where they were. And then I saw it and I was like, "Yeah, but they could have a VPN." And then I was just like, Gabby also said that she shouldn't have done that much. in the first place and that she shouldn't be and she wouldn't be doing it again. But it all happened because she does not want this suspicious, toxic adult who she mistook for the boy to be contacting her fans. This is how I feel right now that every time I talk to him, the fact that you have to go through all that, it's just exactly. stupid. Exactly. And I'll never do it again. I just block like, people. I'm like, when I, it's people that I don't trust, I block them. I'm like, they message me or they just started acting weird block ban or like if i'm like on twitch or something there's somebody in there acting weird or it's just i like i'm just getting a vibe from them where i just don't trust it i just block them or i just don't respond to them delete their messages and things but but anyway in the first place i was just like so con i was so convinced that this was this person and i didn't want them talking to children anymore like i don't feel comfortable knowing that this person who's a dangerous toxic person has access to kids and if i see it going on and i have a really strong suspicion that it's them like that was what i was thinking is like i can't let this person infiltrate the group chats and get personal information because i was getting other dms from people the next clip is again hmm. from this video chat gabby and her fans discuss several accounts that they're keeping an eye on gabby continues on to talk about that some of the accounts were just trolling from me i thought they were a friend and i'm really scared of what they'll do and like now there's just this tension within the fandom of like this person who's been harassing and threatening and playing and i just it'll just keep coming back and back and back yeah but keep an eye out on sophia the newest sophia someone has way too much time on their hands and like why are you gonna do that to somebody they should really just leave you alone yeah it just sucks like that's the thing though being a content creator you're going to come across people that's yeah they're just they're doing too much and um you know there ain't no stopping it. it's just it's it honestly the only way to stop it is for them to just you know finally get that realization it's like 
I'm not going anywhere with this. Like, I need to stop this. I need to, you know, move on or whatever. But, yeah, it's like, you know, that's that's just how people be carrying on and stuff, so. I think those accounts are gone, though. I'm pretty sure they got deleted, but I know who they are. They're people that used to be in the fandom, and they're just trolling. I don't think that they're harmful, and I don't think that they're the same person. I think they're just people trolling at the end of the day. Um, but they, they aren't who they say they are, that's for sure. But I don't think that they're, like dangerous adults if that makes sense under this thread on deaf noodles's twitter a lot of people were not happy with gabby's fandom people were saying that she should be removed from patreon that she shouldn't be engaging with her underage fans because it's not a healthy environment and so on and now let's take a look at the screenshots of messages where an ex supporter of gabby and an ex member of her patreon as well talks about how toxic gabby's fandom is the ex fan gives mm. insight and information about many times where gabby's fan have made false accusations and allegations against Jen Den and other creators. In one of it the happens. texts, she said, once it was really bad last year, she put out a post to not bring social media drama onto Patreon and to have us troll hate accounts on Twitter by telling them to stream her music video. She plays wow. it off as if we're special to her and vented to us about these things, things that never should have been communicated to a fan base, especially since most of the fan base has a hard time seeing when she's in the wrong. But because she got so personal, it was easy to feel like these people who have no tie to her were actually hurting someone we cared about. It's gross manipulation. Here are all mm. the screenshots. You can pause to read them if you like. Yeah, it's like I've dealt with people like this before, so I think everybody knows that the one guy just a robot. It's like he made a few videos about me. Next thing you know, lies is getting spread about me, and I was getting hate for four years. Four years straight. And to top all of that off, here is some tweets from Gabby's fans about spam reporting Jen Den. One user said, Mass reporting Jen Dent on Twitter isn't just an activity, it's a lifestyle. A reason to breathe and escape from this cruel world filled with thieves. It's art. The first gift you open on Christmas. A hug from a loved one. Everything you've ever wanted. Everything you need. That's that's just weird. The fact that Gabby People would love to go after someone like that is just yeah. showing how much she doesn't care if others are bullied. And Jen Den is not... It's crazy. Good. It's like, that's honestly though, like, that's, that's the one of the many lives of a content creator where it's like people honestly think that stuff like that is okay like i can speak from my own experiences that i think if i didn't have the thick skin that i have and just the mindset it's like okay these people is haters they trolls you know they ain't got nothing better else to do so i guess if them hating on me gives them the life that they want then all right then you know do do your worst and stuff but yeah, that's honestly, that's how people carry on. That's how people act. It doesn't surprise me because I'm like, I've dealt with people like this before. This whole situation, I'm like, I've dealt with it, so. Only instance, similar situations have occurred before. The most recent victim of Gabby's mob mentality fan base was Rachel Oates. Last summer during Gabby's infamous scandal, Hello Leash, another small creator, was attacked and harassed multiple times. She has multiple videos on her channel talking about Gabby and the fandom, so you can check them out if you need more mm. info on that. And last but not least, in the Twitter it's thread like posted by Deaf Noodles, there was a TikTok posted about how Gabby and her fans have been allegedly flagging content exposing Gabby on all platforms. Here is the clip. Gabby, was there something I said that you didn't like so you reported my video for harassment and bullying? I'm still gonna talk about it. It's actually pretty convenient considering that I have been texting Jen all morning and her phone got hacked. Jen has an iPhone and I know what you have, the trusty Apple MacBook. I'm gonna make it very clear on what Gabby has done. Gabby Hanna, spread a rumor about my friend Jen Dent, a well-known rape survivor advocate of Child R. When Jesse posted this, Gabby didn't respond to this. On this platform anyways. Not on YouTube either. But you did on your Patreon so you could manipulate your audience. But wait, when you go into your text message with Jesse, it says, did you see the evidence? It's again, dark. But that's not what you say on your Patreon. You said you didn't know who made the allegation. So you said you saw the evidence but in your Patreon you didn't. So which is it? Where's the evidence? Oh wait, there isn't any because you made that shit up. If you think you're gonna silence mm. me, you have another thing coming. Real talk, I hope Jen sues the f of you for defamation. An evil ass. And now here are some comments under the Twitter thread that express their opinions on all of this. One user said, her patrons pay $100 a month for this. They pay $100 a month to work for her by going after whoever she tells wow. them to. If you want, you don't have to and they 
do it. They have doxxed had accounts falsely banned, harassed, That's doxed, crazy. and spread a rumor. This is taking it way too far, and it's time for. It's so like I would platform. never. You mean to tell me? Okay, so that now that's actually surprising. You mean to tell? At least with my haters, I think they were doing that stuff for free. Like if you was paying the like the the leader of the whole like hate train towards me to hate on me. Oh nah, like I no, I I think I'm gonna start a fund to like pay all my haters and stuff and be like you know for your services <laughs> that is no jokes aside that is actually crazy like i didn't realize that it was like that like i just i man okay so that's crazy i'm like they are they at least getting discounts or i mean like to just that nah, that's crazy i'm like that's that's extremely crazy but i mean hey you know it's uh dang <laughs> That's, that's some wild stuff, man. I just was to spend a hundred dollars to just listen to a woman tell you that hey, dox these people, hate them, send them my send them uh like you know links to my music videos and crap like that's that's wild. To take her accounts from her and block so that she can't spread this kind of insanity anymore. She needs help and someone needs to stop her. She's not gonna do it herself. There's no way she can blame this on mental health issues or. That's what yeah I was like I you know. Now I'm like, nah, this is far more worse than a Kanye moment. No, like at least Kanye, you know, he was he was doing some productive. This on the other hand, this is not productive. Yeah, I feel like that though, the only time she would actually come out and apologize for, you know, what she's doing to people is um when like yeah, things do start getting shut down. So let's say for an example, her Patreon gets shut down, she'll probably come out and do like a video talking on it and then try to make it seem like this she wasn't in the wrong. And then once we like uh like once on all the other platforms besides YouTube, where she just has like one platform left. That's why I honestly think she'll probably just will create another account. But um, she definitely will try to like come out and do some sort of an apology video. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was hurting people. My my apologies. I, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Like, you know, some stuff like that. So ADHD. This is straight up bullying. As she screamed, adult bullies. She is the bully. Yeah, as well. Stolen artwork for one of her poetry books from one of her siblings. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, I at least would, like, uh, tell my sister, or, you know, at least let her know, like, hey, I'm about to kind of use this for, like, as some artwork. I don't think I could ever do some stuff like that. Like, yeah, that's, um, dang. Her own siblings. My siblings. giving credit wow she probably is just like well we're family so does it matter i'm like it does like you taking credit for the stuff i created it's like if you drew it for me then that's one thing but if you drew that stuff and then i'd How take it yeah that's this? do you think Gabby that's crazy accountability for her fans actions it's yes purposely making yes them go after creators should gabby be deplatformed from patreon or possibly youtube yes. definitely let me know your thoughts down below on this one and also we have yet another update on the h3 mm. versus trailer situation it's still if you don't know this. h3 productions and a bunch of other people were getting sued over copyright issues over the last jake paul fight which was broadcasted by trailer however h3's case was still under fair use since ethan was giving commentary over a 45 second clip of the fight there was the question if he pirated or illegally watched the fight because on a frenemies episode he joked about not wanting to give 50 dollars to jake paul so he found another way to watch the fight but anyhow the lawsuit I mean, was dropped by the court and then because it's like at the end of the day you only watch that i heard and i heard that um fight like they did all these things to lead up to the fight just for the fight to end in the first round and stuff so it's like really at the end of the day do you want to spend 50 dollars on some stuff like that like, come on now. Like, you guys sit down and think about it. I didn't watch the fight because I knew that people was just going to post the clips and the highlights of it on uh, Twitter. So I'm like, okay, like, that's, I'm like, I'm just going to wait and see what, like, who posted about it and things. Because I know there's going to be people all like, oh, Jake Paul won, Jake Paul. Because I'm like, I'm not spending $50 on that just for the fight to end in the first round. So I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm Miller good. decided to file an individual lawsuit against H3. And now it's dropped again. <laughs> This is probably not stressful at all to Ethan and Ela, but Emily D. Baker, your favorite lawyer spilling legal tea on YouTube, posted about the dropping of the second lawsuit. Here's a clip. Judge Anderson's like, 
What we're not going to do is say that these are related. Go to your other court, deal with your other. I'm not doing it. So he declined the order to order the transfer in the case number. The court ordered plaintiff to show cause why the separate alleged infringers named in the action were properly joined in a single action. Plaintiff had no well pleaded facts. The court's not letting it go. The standard for federal filing is well pleaded facts. There aren't any facts. And so they can't be well pleaded that the defendants did anything other than operate independently. Whether this defendant infringed is a separate event. The Jake Paul uh, ben Askren fight is not the event. The uploads or the alleged copyright infringement, the alleged redistribution, that is the thing. The up, the fight airing is not the thing. It's these different uploads. And it looks like the H3 podcast talked about this like five days later. So it mm. wasn't aired contemporaneous to the fight. So there may not be damages. And this is not about Ethan saying, yeah, I mean, I didn't pay for the fight. It's about the re-airing the fight, unless they're saying you pirated it for the purposes of redistributing it. Who knows if Triller won't mm. try to come for H3 and other people involved again, uh, but probably. that is all we know about the situation so far. Thank you guys so much for watching. That yeah, was I was like, I wasn't paying no $50. I watched that fight for free too. Down below and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed watching because I post new videos every single week. All right, bye. Yeah, I'm like, I know. I'm like, I'm good. Sorry, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't see myself spending no $50 on the fight because from what I heard, they said that they were like playing a bunch of music and it was like they, yeah, it was like they were showing all these different things. It was just like, bro, I'm here for the fight. What's all this other extra stuff? And so... Yeah, I'm like, I ain't spending that much on no um, fight. And it's all like, bro, it's, no, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. But anyways, that was a pretty good video. I like that lawyer person, though. That lawyer person, it's like, it's cool to have, like, it's just cool to have, like, all these different types of, like, people blowing up on YouTube for, like, literally their job professions and stuff. So it's like, yeah, to see see her blowing up uh, doing her lawyer stuff, I think that's sick. I think that's pretty dope. But anyways good video as always guys if you haven't make sure you go subscribe to raise um her channel hot tea make sure you subscribe to her second channel ray rahimi and her business channel build your pocket like subscribe to me too and i'll talk to you guys later thank you guys for watching and peace